I built this coat rack a couple of years ago for our house. It works great and we pretty much love it. I have received quite a bit of requests to build this thing in a video so here we go. I was able to use these drawings to sit down and actually make a set of plans for this one and I'll link those in the description below. I've already pre-milled all the materials for this project and I'm going to start by ripping down the parts for the top box and the corbels. I'm using mostly poplar for this project because it has a nice tight grain and it paints very well. Plus it's fairly cheap. The corbels are actually two laminated pieces of material so for that reason I'll wait to cut those to their final length after I have them glued up in case the parts get skewed a little bit while I'm clamping them together. This gives me the ability to go back and square them up properly after the glue is dried and then I can cross cut them to their final length. I'm cross cutting all the parts for the box to their final dimensions and the corbels at a little bit more of a rough dimension. The four dividers for the coat rack are evenly spaced to make three cubby areas in the box. To mark out for those, I stretch the tape measure up across the length of the top and bottom until I get to a number that's easily divisible by three and make two middle marks. I can now strike a line and transfer those lines both top and bottom, making sure to transfer the marks all the way around. I then will mark the center of the dividers themselves. I'm gluing the dividers onto the bottom platform only at this point. You'll sort of see why here in just a minute. Those center marks that I made earlier really make lining up the parts so much easier at once you get to this point. While the glue is drying on that, I can cut out the corbels. I have a printable template available in the plans for this actual step to make it a little easier. I tape both blocks together with masking tape. Double stick tape probably would have been a little bit better for this, but this is just what I had on hand. Now I can just spray glue the template on. <laughs> I'm too lazy to go through the trouble of changing out the factory 3 quarter inch blade that came on my bandsaw. So this step took a little bit longer for me because I had to sort of make these relief cuts. But in the end, it, it was sort of a wash. It came out okay.
The oscillating spindle sander works great when it comes to actually smoothing out these cuts and just a little bit of hand sanding is all that's needed after that to sort of get into some of the hard to reach areas. The first time that I made one of these I sanded them completely by hand and that was quite a bit more work. Now that the glue has dried, I can go back and countersink and drive some screws to make sure that these center dividers are held in place properly. You can see that having those reference lines on the bottom makes it a lot easier to know where exactly you want to drill these countersinks so that you know that you're drilling right into the center of each divider. My design for this coat rack calls for another piece underneath the bottom of the box that is just a little bit wider and a little bit longer to sort of give it a little bit of a reveal that I'm looking for. I'm using a scrap piece of plywood for this and I'll use center marks to help align the pieces up at the back and glue laminate them together. As you can see, this step covers up the screws from the previous step. I am now once again making a set of reference lines based off the plans that I've drawn up and these will give me the location for mounting the corbels to the box. I will first pre-drill and then glue and screw on the corbels. You'll notice that in this step you can now see why I didn't attach the top of the box yet because it would sort of be hard to actually access to be able to drive these screws to attach the corbels with. Some plugs made out of the same poplar material will be used to cover those screw holes up with. Now is the point where we can start adding all the parts that will go on the top. I start with the top itself by gluing and clamping it in place and then drive in screws once the glue is dried. I will then pad the top with some plywood so that I can add some molding later. There's really no need to miter the corners of this because it's all going to be covered up with the molding that I'll add later. The last piece for the top will be cut a little bit wider than the padded out piece just to give it that nice overhang and this will sort of give us that, again, that sort of reveal that we're looking for. And you definitely want to miter the corners on this because they're going to be seen and you want it to look really nice. The cross piece that holds the coat hooks is the next step in this process. I mark out four even spaces for the hooks. I can then place one of the hooks on the mark and sort of place it widthwise where it looks the best to me. And then using my combo square I can mark the bottom of that actual coat hook itself. 
I'm using a punch to mark the center for each screw hole and then pre-drilling the holes. And I'm just attaching this cross piece using glue and pocket screws from the back side. I'm using the same molding that I used the first time I made one of these coat racks, which happens to be called stop trim. I make a mark to get the cut close to where it needs to be and then slowly sneak up on, on each miter until I get a perfect fit. I like to cut all the trim beforehand, numbering them as I go, and then once it comes time to nail them on, I know exactly where each piece goes and I can sort of do that all at once. Every time I do one of these jobs where I'm nailing on trim, I'm reminded of the fact that I need to buy a pin nailer. I just, for whatever reason, haven't bought one. At this point, I will fill any and all nail holes or any errant miters or anything that might need a little bit of filling with some sort of wood filler. You can either use an actual wood filler itself or you can use drywall compound and then I can sand all the surfaces nice even and flush and try to get all the boards as smooth as possible going through the grits of sandpaper before it's time to add the paint. For the finish for this project I will start by brushing on a couple of coats of primer sanding in between the coats and then I will brush on a couple of coats of high gloss acrylic enamel paint. To prevent stripping the screws for the coat hooks themselves, I will just drive these screws by hand. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was actually quite a bit of fun to sort of go back and rebuild an old project that I had built before. It's quite a bit easier this time, even though I was actually filming it. I guess when you know sort of what you're getting into, it kind of makes things go faster and a little easier. The first time I made this thing, I actually built a lot of it using just scrap plywood and any scraps I had lying around the shop. And as you can see, as you can see it still looks pretty good. Now I've got a video even making the little cubby boxes that you see up there. And those were originally meant to house keys and things like that. But as you can see, it mostly just holds the 47 hats and mittens that my daughter owns. But anyways, I guess overall it's, it's doing its purpose and we get quite a bit of use out of it. For any details that I may have left out of the video, be sure to check out the website article linked in the description below. And if you're really interested and would like to maybe build one of these for yourself, I have a set of plans available for this project also linked in the description below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you found this video useful. It really helps me out a lot, especially sharing them and, and you know getting them out there to all the people that you think might also be interested in this video. That's all I got for you this time. Happy trails. Thanks for watching.